when the human spirit is free, we can accomplish anything we want. We are very much designed to create and be innovative. If you think about it, the whole universe is made of energy and thoughts. Our thoughts are gained from interacting with people. And sometimes when we are sincere and deep in our efforts to help humanity, I believe we get help from different dimensions. Hello, Pat. Hey, Robert. What's happening today? Hey, just getting a few things. No pizza today? Not today. OK, RJ, how is it going? It's going great. No questions? No questions. Hello, Hello sir. sir. Good so to nice see you. to see you. Yes, they're making a movie about you. How did you know? I can tell, yeah. You're, you're in it. You're in it. Well, here we go, right? <laughs> Michael, what, what, what did you do with the eggs? Michael, please, from now on, don't wheel the eggs inside, never, OK? My name is Robert Scaff. I am a grocer. I have been a grocer for the last 60 years of my life. People ask me, do you work here? I, I, my answer, I live here. I am the owner. I am uh, taking a big risk at having painting as such in the business establishment, but I do care a great deal about our future, about humanity, and I think it's worth taking the risk. What kind of risk? Um, many people uh, were complaining that it, some of my painting are offensive, and I wasn't budging on any decisions. They don't agree with the message, and they don't see a reason why they want to be looking at any evocative ideas while they are shopping. We should change our perspective on painting and art. People visit stores a lot more than they visit museums and art galleries. What do you think of the paintings in the store? They're interesting. They have, like, they're all kind of a different design. They all have different, like, message. Yeah, I come here almost every day. I never even notice them until, uh, until I heard about the documentary. I never looked off. I've never noticed it before. But now that I see it, I think they're absolutely beautiful. I mean, this one's pretty intense. Yeah, very interesting art. Do you know who the artist is? Hello, my name is Donna Haysalt. I was born in the East End of Fort William, a town that no longer exists, actually at McKellar Hospital, a place that is no longer there. I went to Ogden School, no longer there. Uh, Churchill High School, no longer there. But I'm here. She's, a, she's a one of my uh, favorite customers. From years ago, and my husband's been gone for eight years now. And he remembers my husband. I like that. I had to show you a picture. You're like, oh, yeah, I remember him. He was a great guy. And But uh, then one day, I was here shopping, and uh, he was talking to a few people in the aisle, and I was walking by, and I overheard Robert say, so I need to find an artist. My little ears perked up, <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, you know, nothing ventured, right? So I'm like, excuse me, I'm an artist. He says, oh, yeah, do you know how to paint? And he asked me a few technical questions, you know. I'm like, yes, yes, I can do anything, you know. So we kind of started after that, didn't we? Um, that would have been six or seven. No, yeah, yeah, right after my husband died. Seven years ago, maybe even yeah. eight. 
Then we've done these paintings. There are about 40 of them. Just take it right back here. Our partnership has been going on for years now, and hopefully for a few more years. That's one thing I think is super cool, that he's turned his grocery store into a gallery. I've got to be original. i got to be me. i got to be me. Da -da 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 -da. Most of the paintings are gloomy and dark. Unfortunately, this is how I see our world right now. With COVID-19, I think there were more people dying of overdose on fentanyl than from the virus. And how do you have experience with young people that have passed away? I am a grocer. I deal with people every day. Uh, I hear their stories, I hear their fate coming to an end, I can feel their suffering, I can see it happening. When you have no cause in life, somehow you lose interest in living and you become addictive to and vulnerable to any substance abuse. I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, but I feel things. You are lucky if you have friends. You're lucky if you have people you can trust and they love you and you love them, but unfortunately, not all of us can be like that. To a search for a missing First Nations youth in Thunder Bay. This painting is about all the deaths that happened in Thunder Bay. Many young people from small reserves ended up dying without knowing how it happened. Whether it was foul play or their own doing, I couldn't tell you. But I am just exposing how tough it is to move from a small town to a larger place. Lots of people cannot adjust. It's not easy for everyone to be displaced and implanted again. We are social animals. We need a network of people to support us to help us survive. We are dependent on each other. He asked me if uh, he could use me in one of his visions that he had uh, and bring in a couple of pictures and one, two, three, and four. That's the only one that actually looks like me. He had, uh, envisioned me as dropping goodies on people. Whether um, it's a good thing, I don't think so, because it's all junk food, but. <laughs> Except for the healthy choices. I'm happy in healthy choices. As with all our paintings, the painting has to send a message. It has to be engaging. During the war, the, you know, it's yeah. foggy. Nobody knows what's going on. This is what happens here is you're going to have fog, pink fog, pink, pink fog. fog. Pink fog, not over everything. No, uh, enough of it. you want it, like, approaching? Yeah, exactly. There you go. Coming in. Well, he was relying on me to, to take his nebulous description and make it into a visual for him, you know. Let me add one more comment about uh, this painting here. Basically, I'm talking about hate, prejudice, there are those who support one side or support the other side. The media adds fuel to the fire. Fake news is contributing to this culture of animosity, of polarization, of politicking. I mean, I may disagree with all of the concepts, but 
boy, you know, I sure admire when someone brings something to life. You can put something in the image of the stained glass. Well, I, I like to see uh, this George name. Floyd, that uh, <clears throat> sure. ma the martyr. Yeah, I'll put his head in here. What are they calling the police for? They should have called the ambulance. <coughs> are we deciding who that other person's going to be? I like the just Google. Brianna. I always say, bad guys, 49%, good guys, 51 I really believe that. I and mean, we have a 2% more good guys on the planet than bad guys, and we win in the end. And I think Robert was traumatized by the way of life, where he comes from, where he came from. History he had to go through, you know, it's just never going to leave him. There were snipers, there were shelling, there were shooting. War is always ugly. It's, it, if you want, uh, most recently, it's very similar to what happened to Syria. You had bombing from everywhere. You have people kidnapping uh, you for no reason except for your religion. Everything shut down. There was hunger. You would be surprised uh, how people change from uh, docile and civilized to savages. How in an instant somebody can turn into a murderer. It, it never leaves you. You're never happy. You never forget uh, what's happening to your own people. I can see sustained trauma never leaving the person. And it's never left him. I've said that to him. I said, Robert, are you exorcising demons, you know, through this? Oh, no, no, he says, you know, he doesn't agree at all. Person looking at it uh, must be knowledgeable about uh, devastation, the uh, locust cause. They destroy all vegetation, they destroy life. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can get some kind of perspective on how the deals behind the curtains are done. The whole Middle East is still at war for one reason and one reason only. It's money and it's the military industrial complex. They have to sell weapons. Without conflict, they can't sell any weapons. There's like half a billion people suffering in the Middle East because they don't want to see peace in that part of the world. So I'm speaking for hundreds of million people who suffer because of greed and profit. Knowing that the history of man is the history of war, that no community of humans has ever been free of war, ever. Through experience, we learn that you have to have a defense always against predators, whether they be human, animal, Mineral, you know, and I just don't see war politics the same way Robert does. I think he feels a sense of maybe powerlessness, but I see it as good people will keep our heads above water till the end of the earth. I am probably the only Lebanese that moved away from Lebanon, never went back even for a visit. The trauma was so harsh and unbearable that I, I wanted to forget about the whole experience. Although prior to the war, there was no, not enough superlative to uh, describe Beirut from the Hong Kong of the Middle East to the Paris of the Middle East to the, to the Switzerland of the Middle East. It was a lovely, lovely country. And then war and hate, prejudice and bias destroyed it. Can we take a moment? This is very emotional to me. In 75, civil war broke out in Lebanon. In 76, I have decided to leave the country with my entire family. I figured that the whole country is going to explode, which it did. 
So it was the right decision, and I chose Canada, and I'm grateful for the Canadian people to accept me as one of them. I've been in Canada now for over 44 years. I've done uh, business in Thunder Bay for almost all this time. Things were going very well, but unfortunately, I didn't expect the impact of the Superstore on the market. It was amazing how much business we lost. It, it was just shock. I lost everything I earned for years, but I am not bitter and I am not going to waste my life on something that's gone. So I, I am rebuilding. I, I'm still in the game. How can I help you? What are you looking for? Uh, do you have feta cheese? Feta cheese. Feta cheese. <laughs> Already. Work to me is the easiest part of my life. I think about people. I care about people. I care about the humanity. That this occupies me 24 seven. My work, I am here, probably it's helping me forget about all these problems and carry on. Every family has a story to tell. We don't have to put up with violence, poverty to that extreme. I know we cannot eradicate poverty, but we can reduce it drastically. Same with the violence and wars. And this is one of the reasons I do what I do. I am hoping that the message will get out to people. I wrote several books, no success. With the paintings, I figured you can look at the painting for five minutes and you probably get the message or be inspired to do something. Unfortunately, I, I haven't had any uh, positive response from uh, anybody. Hey, Robert. How are you? Good. But I'm not giving up. I'm going to continue. What do you think about painting? All the what? Paintings. What paintings? In the store. I didn't notice any. No? No. Okay. Well, I usually just run in, grab what I need, and I'm out of here. But they're not having the reaction he thought they would and hoped that they would. He thought they would be impactful, that people would come in the store and see that. Wow, you know, you've opened our eyes. Really? When did that happen? To be honest, I never didn't really notice them. So there's various reasons why I like some of the paintings I've done for him more than others. I just never painted a, a torn open corpse before. It's fun. I asked Google, show me the worst accident victims, you know, like, so I saw like human bodies smeared on the pavement, you know, it was shocking. Guts, yeah, car accidents, man. Anyway, I just enjoyed uh, the challenge of portraying so that when it was done, you look, you go, ah, what else is there to say? This painting means a lot to me. This is uh, the first one we've ever done. The aimless ship shows you again my pessimistic views about the future of humanity. The ship represents humanity and it's been wrecked. I am showing the leaders as clowns, their followers as parrots, the people as sheep. And then you have the vultures taking advantage of all the chaos. I truly, truly believe that we need a different class of leaders to survive beyond decades.
And even though many people have the wrong idea and follow the wrong things, there's still a majority who are clear-headed and will vote, you know, outvote the dumb ones. Until the earth dies, good people will continue to try and help others, whether they are victims of war or other injustice. I have faith in people. But our lifestyle right now is not going to be sustained forever. We have elected to lead a life that's very expensive, very taxing on the environment. We're waiting for a crisis to happen so the politicians can fund clean energy, more clean car, deal with the traffic jams. As a group, the super wealthy are not doing enough to help our future. So many rich, powerful people don't really care except about amassing wealth and holding on to power. And in the meantime, the whole planet is going down to hell. The elite has the power to influence any law, any steps a government take. What good is it when you have billions of dollars and the whole entire planet is dying? That's not going to help you any. When you hear a genius like Stephen Hawkins talking about the end of humanity in the millennia, you realize the peril we're in. We cannot wait any longer. We have to take action. The planet is a beautiful living thing. And it's had a birth and an adolescence and an adulthood. And one day it will have a death. And until then, we live, we laugh, we love, we appreciate it and enjoy it, celebrate it. But there's no use agonizing about the fact that it's going to die. I'm going to die. You can beat your head against the wall and wish it weren't so. And you can prop me up with sticks and try and keep me alive longer. But, you know, it's inevitable. We didn't have the response we were hoping for. Uh, most people are too busy to look, you know. And, and, oh, a and, lot and then, of people have never looked. Uh, like, uh, for all I know, it, everybody, uh, my friends, my family, it was wasted money. Some of them are a little bit morbid, you know, but... Uh... I like how there's, like, a political edge to them. And it's kind of ironic being in such a benign place, like a grocery store, you know. But it's, it's fantastic because it probably reaches so many people in the community. The stairs to heaven. And I, I write here love, devotion, and uh, it's this combination of sacrifice and, of and devotion that offer us solace and happiness and meaning to life. If we want to enjoy life and be happy, we have to contribute as well. You know, I'm, I'm living in death's departure lounge at my age, at my age. I'm in this big room and a train looks like a subway train, right? Going, stopping, people getting on. Stop, people get on. And I have a ticket. One day I'll be riding that train, but I can't read the time or the date. But one day it'll stop for me and I'll get on, you know. And that's not that far in the future. So uh, 
Until then, I have to um, do as much as I can to make my life worthwhile to myself. Time. Time is everything. We don't know when our time is going to be up. We don't know when the whole human race is going to disappear. We don't know when our planet is going to disappear. There's always something more you can do. And maybe his way are these paintings as his way of contributing to mankind and making the world a better place. And this is the secret of happiness, is that you have to realize Happiness also means heartache, means sacrifice, means efforts, means giving. <laughs>